bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I just want to praise him forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. For everything he's done for me, I owe him a praise. Hallelujah. I just want to praise
Lord God. Lord, how you kept us from harm and danger, Lord God. How you've kept us through this pandemic, Lord God. We just thank you for who you are, your excellence, your faith, and everything you are to us, Lord God. Oh, we thank you for this day to come and worship you because you're so worthy to be praised. And Lord, right now, we've come. We're asking you to accept our praise, Lord God, as we give it to you, Lord God. We want you to be pleased with our praise, Lord God, because we are so humbled to thank you, God, for being so good for us. Lord, thank you for every instrument, voice, and brass, Lord God, and organ, Lord God, and everyone that's working in this moment right now. But Lord, we sit patiently waiting for a word from you, Lord God. We lift Bishop up to you right now, Lord God. Lord, anything that may be troubling him right now, we cast it away, Lord God, so that he can, he can come and give it the way you gave it to him, Lord God. We sit patiently, Lord God, but we want this word from you. Have your way, Lord God. Have your divine way. God, it's your way or no way at all. And thank you for being the man in charge. We love you and we bless you. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This truly is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, you, magnify the Lord Hallelujah. with me and let us yes. exalt his name together. Bible says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. That's the kind of God that we serve. And we want to lift up the praises unto heaven on this day. For this is the day that God has allowed us once again to come together to lift up our collective voices and to give him the fruit of our lips and to give him our praise, our glory, and our adoration. This is the first Sunday in the month of July. The Lord is just allowing this year to roll on by. And oh, what a year it has been. I, I was looking at a post from our minister, T.J. Dooley, actually talking about uh, this second half of the year. And I believe his post says something like this. I believe in God that the second half of this year, the last six months of this year, will be a greater blessing according to what has happened the first six months of this year. And so I grab hold to that proclamation right now that the last six months of this year are going to blow our natural minds. I just believe that God is up to something great and God is going to do something grand and glorious and magnificent. Do you not know that it is during the times of trouble that God flexes his muscles? Do you not know that it is during the times of trouble and pain that God makes himself known to all mankind? And so I'm just looking for God to do something great in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trials, in the midst of upheavals, in the midst of uncertainty. I'm looking for God to do something great in our midst. And I know that he is going to do just that. Well, saints of God, we had planned to come back together again 
in corporate worship, but looking at the status of our country and even the status of our, our state of Ohio and how the numbers are steadily going up, we thought that it prudent and wise that we still remain uh, separated as far as corporate worship is concerned and to continue to bring worship to you uh, via YouTube and Facebook so that we can worship in the safety of our own homes. And so that's what we're going to do until the Lord says otherwise, knowing still that while the building may be closed, the church is open for business and God is still on uh, in control and doing what he needs to do. Amen. So we praise God for that. Continue to pray for the church. Continue to pray for the members of the church. We are still the family of God. And while we may not be able to come together corporately to worship, we are still connected by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are still brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are still our brothers and sisters keeper. And so continue to pray for the church, continue to pray for Gospel Tabernacle Church and the ministries of Gospel Tabernacle Church that God will continue even to use us and to spread our wings even during this time of pandemic. We thank you so much for how you have continued to sow seed into the good ground of this church and we want to encourage you, continue uh, to do so by sowing your tithes and your offerings. You can do so uh, by Giplify or you can bring your uh, your tithes and your offerings by the church on Sunday afternoons, 12.30 to 1.30 or you can mail in your gifts to the church office. We continue to solicit your prayers as God continues to show us his will even in this time of pandemic. Amen. Right where you are, why don't you just open up your mouth and lift up your voice and give God a worthy praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Woo. God, we thank you. God, we glorify your holy name. To you be all praise, all glory, all honor, and thanksgiving. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, I dare you right where you are to give him a praise right where you are. I dare you give him a praise right where you are. I dare you give him a praise right where you are. Hey! hey, hey. Hallelujah! 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 Glory, glory, hallelujah. Give them a praise right where you are. Thank you, God. Yes, hallelujah. God, we lift you up right now. Oh, I just feel that this is a praise moment. This is a praise getaway. This is a praise break. You ought to praise him right now. You ought to go to giving God the glory right now. You ought to stand up wherever you are. Pick your feet up and put them down. You ought to stand up right where you are. Take those hands and begin to wave those hands under God. You ought to stand up right where you are and put those hands together and clap your hands under God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your praise break take your praise break right now praise him right now praise him in advance for what God is going to do praise him in advance for how he's going to bless you praise him in advance for how he's going to protect you praise him in advance for how he's going to cover you praise him right now I dare you to praise him in your bedroom Praise him in your kitchen. Praise him in your living room. 
praise him in your basement. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Woo, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. Yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The psalmist said, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes. Bless him, bless him, yes. Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Saints of the Most High God have a right to praise him. Uh-huh, that's right. You have a right to praise the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in this worship experience. Amen. Our praise team has been blessing us so wonderfully. And they're going to come again and bless us. Amen. In song as they prepare the atmosphere for the word of God that shall follow. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. We've already been praising the name of Jesus. For he is our rock, Thank you, Jesus. he's our fortress, he's yes. our deliverer, and in Thank him Jesus. we put all of our trust. Yes, hallelujah. So we praise the name hallelujah. of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Will 
Jesus. He's our rock. He's our fortress. And yes, he is our deliverer in whom we trust. Yes, that's right. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our strong tower. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, you better praise him. You better praise him right there. You better praise him right now. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our strong tower. He's our deliverer. He's the one in whom we place our trust. Ah, yes, that's the God we serve. That's the God we praise. That's the God we magnify. Yes, praise that God, the one and only, the true and living God. He has allowed us to see another month in this year of 2020. This is the first Sunday in the month of July, and we always celebrate and observe Holy Communion on the first Sunday of every month and so I want to lead you my brothers and sisters as we partake in the Lord's Supper Holy Communion I want to give you just a moment a few moments to go and get your elements wherever you are 
your crackers, your bread or your unleavened bread or your crackers and your juice, go get it, amen, because we want to partake in the Lord's Supper together. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death and my suffering. This is something that he never wants us to forget. He never wants us to forget his sacrifice of love, how he shed his blood and how his body was broken for us, uh, that the penalty, the costly penalty of sin might be paid through his perfect sacrifice. And so if you have your elements in hand at this time, Jesus sat down at the table with his disciples on that fateful day. He took the bread, he broke the bread. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take it and eat all of it. Hallelujah. Likewise, our Lord and Savior took the cup. He said, this is my blood in the New Testament. Take it and drink all of it. Hallelujah. In doing so, you are partaking in the Lord's suffering and the shedding of his blood. Ah, that great sacrifice that he made for us for the remission of sin. Hallelujah. It is the blood. Hallelujah. That was shed on Calvary. And that blood indeed shall never, never lose its power. Receive the body, the broken body, and the shed blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said before, Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do show and you do demonstrate that you remember his sacrifice of love. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. I want you to turn your attention to the gospel of St. Mark, the gospel of St. Mark, and we want to rest our attention on chapter number eight of the gospel of St. Mark. And I, we want to look at verses 22 through 26. Verses 22 through 26. The gospel of St. Mark, chapter number eight. Verses 22 through 26. When you have it, it reads like this. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. I want to go back up and look at verses 24 and 25 again and he looked up and said I see men as trees after that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly I want to use for a subject from this passage of scripture today whatever it takes that's it that's all of it whatever it takes whatever it takes 
Would you pray with me, my brothers and sisters? Father, it is in the precious, matchless, wonderful, glorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we even have the privilege to approach your holy throne at this time. We pray, Lord God, that you would infuse this preaching moment with the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. Anoint this clay vessel, O oh God, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. God, I pray now that you would think with my mind, that you would speak with my tongue, O oh God, that what the Spirit has to say to the church on today would be clearly heard and precisely evident according to what you want to deliver to your people on today, God. Use me, God, as you see fit. There is somebody, or there are some bodies out there, God, who need the truth of your word right now. And so we bless you in advance for how you're going to take this vessel of clay and use me, oh God, for your glory to bless your people. In Jesus' precious name, we thank you and we pray. And we all say together, amen and amen. Whatever it takes. My brothers and my sisters, I've come to the conclusion that if you're really going to be all that God has for you to be, if you're really going to do all that God has called you to do, if you're going to have all that God has called you to have, I've come to this conclusion that you must adopt this particular mindset. And that mindset is simply this, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever I have to do, wherever I have to go, wherever I have to, or whatever I have to say, whatever it takes, I'm going to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be well, whatever it takes to be healthy, whatever it takes to have peace of mind, whatever it takes uh, to do what God has called me to do, God, I make this declaration unto you that whatever it takes, God, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it because, God, what you have called me to is worth what I have to go through in order to get what you have called me to. This life, my brothers and sisters, has a way of putting the squeeze on us and sometimes even trying to squeeze the very life out of us. And that's why we need to always be ready to go to God who is the source of our strength, who is the giver of our life, who is the sustainer of that life that he has so ably given unto us so that God can work out in us and through us any and everything he needs to work out in us and through us to get us to the place that he has already ordained for us to get to in the life that he has given us and in the life that we now live. So uh, your mantra ought to be whatever it takes. Yeah, uh, sometimes it gets hard and it gets rough and yes, yeah, sometimes life brings disappointments unto us. And let me just help you understand, my friends, that when life brings disappointments, they are designed to make you quit. They are designed to make you give up. They are designed to make you wave the towel and even throw in the towel. But you have to have a resolute mind, my brothers and my sisters, and you have to have this mindset that whatever it takes, I'm willing to go through and I'm willing to do whatever it takes so that God can get the glory out of my life. That's God's plan that he would get the glory out of your life. He has given you life and he wants to get the glory out of the life that he has given unto you. And so God in his word is always showing us how we can be better, how we can go to another level how we can attain and achieve and climb and progress in our life's journey. And so he shows us in his word, even in this text that we find 
in the Gospel of St. Mark chapter 8 uh, that sometimes life will hit us so hard that it causes us to go through some changes and some pains and causes us to become or be in a state where we need healing from something that we've gone through. Has anybody ever gone through something so painful, so stressful, so strenuous that after you went through it, you needed some healing? Yeah, God helped you to survive it, but even though you survived, you still need God to heal you from what you have been through. You may have come through it, but you may have come through it hurt and wounded and troubled and stressed out and you need God to heal you of the hurt that you have encountered by going through what you went through and so here we find in the 8th chapter of the gospel of St. Mark uh, this man uh, that is blind and so the Bible talks about how he is a blind man starting in verse number 22 of chapter 8 of the gospel of St. Mark and here it is, here it is, it's very clear. The Bible says that Jesus comes into this town called Bethsaida and when he got into the town, the Bible says that this man was brought to him by his friends. The man was blind and this blind man was brought to Jesus in Bethsaida when he got into town. And the Bible says that they brought this man to Jesus so that he might touch him and heal him or cure him of his Blindness, yes. This is what I want you to see here. Uh, these were some good friends. They were loyal friends and they knew that Jesus could touch their friend and that Jesus could heal their friend of his blind condition. And so the Bible specifically says that they brought him to Jesus so that he might touch him. But what I need you to understand is that even though people might be well-intentioned, sometimes it's a mistake to try to figure out just what God needs to do in order to heal somebody. In other words, you may come with your preconceived notions and ideas as to what this person needs in order to be made whole. Now, it was their intention that they bring him to Jesus so Jesus could touch him and then heal him of his blindness. Uh, but if you read the text, that was not Jesus' plan at all. Yes, he was going to heal him, but he was going to use his own method to heal him him. That's one thing that you see about Jesus as you look at his ministry throughout the Gospels. You will see that Jesus is not married to any one method that he will employ to bring man or woman into wholeness. He's liable to change that thing up to meet the specific need or to be appropriate for the occasion of the day. And so just because you saw him do it one way on an occasion doesn't mean that he's going to do it the same way. It's all right that they thought that he needed to touch him, but that's okay because Jesus took control of the situation. And aren't you glad that Jesus knows just what you need to be made whole? Aren't you glad that he knows your situation so intimately that he's not looking for, for clues from anybody else, but he knows just what you need in order to bring you from where you are to where you need to be. And so look at what Jesus does. I love it. He never does anything by chance or happenstance, but there's always a method in his movements. There's always a method to all that he does. And the Bible says he takes the man by the hand and then he leads the man out of the city, clear out of the the city because sometimes what you need is for God to separate you from your crowd of influence or sometimes what God needs to do for you is not for public consumption sometimes what God needs to do for you other people can't handle what he's got to do for you in order to bring you to a place of complete wholeness and healing because folk may have their own ideas and their 
own understandings according to what they think you need to have done to you. But then sometimes what God needs to do for you to do to you, other folk can't handle what God's got to take you through. And so sometimes it's best that God gets you alone, that God isolates you so that God can do a private surgery on you to get you to the place that you need to be. So he took the man clear out of town with God's strong hand. He brings the man out. I'm so glad that he's still using that same strong hand to lead us from danger, to lead us to victory. And so he takes the man by the hand and he leads him out of town. The man is blind. He can't see anything. Uh, but sometimes, matter of fact, sometimes I, I would say this, sometimes you need to employ a, a blind faith. In other words, God, I'm in your hands. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I need you to do for me. But all I know, God, is that I'm in your hands right now. And so sometimes you need blind faith because sometimes just like other people can't handle what God's got to do to you just like other people can't handle it. Sometimes you yourself can't even handle what God's got to bring you through in order to get you to the next level in God. That's why we don't know everything all at once because some stuff we can't handle it yeah that movie, A Few Good Men, that famous line from the movie you want the truth you can't handle the truth, and I'm coming to tell you today it's some of the stuff that God got to bring you through and some of the stuff that you've got to experience and God's got to do to you to get you through. You can't handle the truth. If you knew beforehand, you would turn around and run as fast as you could. If you knew what you had to go through in order to get to the level that God has for you, you would say, oh no, that's okay. I decline. I, 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 I refuse. I'll just do something else. No. But that's why sometimes we as children of the Most High God, we have to employ blind faith. God, where you lead me, I will follow. I, I don't know what you're going to do, God, but wherever you lead me, God, I will follow. So the man was blind. Jesus had gotten the man out of town, away from the crowd, away from the hustle and bustle of society, and got him out there alone, out of town. And the Bible says that Jesus spits in his eyes. I need you to catch this now. He spits in the man's eyes. I, you know, I don't know what it is about Jesus and saliva. Because on more than one occasion, Jesus has used saliva to bring about healing. But then if you do some medical research, I came to find out that medical science has uncovered this element that is found in saliva and it is called opiorphin and this opiorphin component is a natural pain killer and scientists will tell you that this natural pain killer is six times more potent than morphine. So, so can I tell you that God knows what he's doing? Perhaps God needs to heal you from what you've been through so that you can be the whole person that he wants you to be in the first place. And so check it out. We're still talking about blind faith here, my brothers and my sisters. He spit in his eye. Now remember, there was another time when he spit on the ground and the Bible says made clay out of the mud and then placed the clay on the eyes of this, of this other blind man. But this time the Bible says he spit in his eye. Not on his, not on his eyelid, but he spit right in his eye. My God, I told you, you can't handle some of the stuff 
that God has to do to you in order to bring you through. You want to come through? You want to be delivered? You want to be set free? Well, then sometimes God got to take you through some uncomfortable moments and God's got to take you through some seasons in your life that are uncomfortable and that are painful to you. Nevertheless, they are necessary to get you to the place that God has ordained for you to be. Can I just help somebody out right now? You are indeed on your way to what God has for you. You are indeed on your way to being who God has called for you to be. You are indeed on your way to realizing your destiny in God. And so as we see here in the text, Jesus spit in the man's eyes. And then he tells, uh, he spits in his eyes. And then he touches the man's eyes and he asks the man a question. He says, he says, tell me, what do you see? The man says, I see men as trees. That tells me two things. First of all, it tells me that the man was not born blind. Because if he was born blind, then he would have no understanding of what a man or even a tree would look like. And so because he described men as looking like trees, that lets us know that he was not born blind. But through some accident or through some illness or sickness that he went through in his life, it brought him to a place where he lost his sight. Hence the need... For Jesus to heal him of what he's been through. We do not know what that traumatic experience was. But I do know that in this life that we live, we are subject to go through some stuff. Some hard times, some troubles, and some trials. And sometimes when we go through, they will leave us wounded and battered and scarred and messed up. That's why we need the healing power of our Lord Jesus Christ to touch us everywhere we hurt. So he tells the man, what do you see? I see trees as men. So that lets us know that first of all, he was not born blind. But secondly, that also lets us know that sometimes your deliverance is a process. Uh huh. You're going through some stuff, not to just be going through, but you're going through some stuff because you're in process, not just any process, but you're in the process of God. God is working on your situation. God is working on your case and you are in process, holy divine process because God is bringing you to where he wants you to be. And so sometimes your deliverance is not instantaneous, but don't lose heart and don't give up. You need to keep the faith and know that God is there with you working on your case. My Lord, my God, ah, please. Be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. You ought to praise God just because you're in process. You ought to praise God just because God ain't through with you yet. You ought to praise God that you are a work in progress and that God is building your building. God is building you up. God is putting muscles on you. God is building up your most holy faith. And so what I love about it is that God won't leave you in an unfinished condition. God won't leave you in an unfinished state. So what does God do? The Bible says that Jesus touches him again. In other words, God, whatever you have to do, do it, oh God. I'm here right now, God. And whatever you have to do, do it again, God. If you need to touch me again, Lord, touch me Again, yes, yes, yes. I, I don't know about these folk who just get it one time and can be satisfied for the rest of their lives. But what I know is that this life will work on you something fierce sometimes. And sometimes you just need another touch. Sometimes you just need another touch from God. Touch me in the morning. Touch me in the noonday. 
Touch me in the evening time. Touch me in the midnight hour. God, whatever you have to do, I'm willing to be there to take what you have for me. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus touched him for the second time, the man began to see clearly whatever it takes God I'm willing to go through touch me Lord touch me Lord touch me Lord hallelujah God if you gotta separate me God take me with your strong hand remove me from the place that I am right now God so you can get me alone God and do what you want to do with me Lord whatever it takes I'm willing to go through God have your way in me Lord God touch me God touch me God touch me God say yeah touch me God whatever it takes God I know I'm a work in progress God you're working on my building God I'm not what I want to be but thank God I'm not what I used to be whatever 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 it takes God I'm willing I'm your servant I'm a willing vessel have your way in me anything in me that shouldn't be Lord cleanse me and take it out of me I want to be all that you're calling me to be anything God that's displeasing to you work it out God work it out God I want to be more like Jesus whatever 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 it takes Lord I'm willing uh, to go through. Uh, touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Have your way uh, in the name of Jesus. Good God from Zion. God, you're working on my building. So glad you're not going to leave me uh, in an unfinished condition. Uh, but you're helping me. Uh, you're strengthening me. Uh, you're building me up. You're taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory. So if I gotta go through some tough times, I'm willing to go through what I gotta go through because one day I'm gonna see clearly. One day I'm gonna see clearly. I might have some trouble right now with my sight and I can't see straight I see some things off but God touch me I said God touch me don't care where you gotta touch me but touch me Lord fix me cleanse me make me whole make me new make me over change me transform me make me new so I can see clearly oh yeah I can see clearly now I've been through the storm I've been through the rain I've been through heartache I've been through trouble I've been through disappointment I've been through rejection, but oh now I can see clearly now because you touched me when I was down. You touched me when I was out. You touched me when I was going through. You touched me when I was at my lowest point and you brought me up. You picked me up out of the stuff I was in. You brought me forth. You got me to myself. You got me all alone. And then you worked on me. You took that hand. And you put your hand on me. And your hand touched me. 
Your hand healed me. Your hand blessed me. Your hand brought me up. Your hand brought me out. And now I can see clearly now. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank Him right now. I feel a praise to thank Him right now. I dare you right now to thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Because He didn't leave you, but He kept His hand on you and He touched you. And now you're all that God has called you to be. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, thank him right now. This is a, a praise party, a, a praise party, because you are that man. You didn't know it, but I'm telling you right now, you are that man, and you had some issues, and you had some troubles, you had some problems, uh, you had some circumstances, you had some pain, uh, you had some disappointments, uh, you had some rejection, uh, you had some abuse. Uh, but Jesus, 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 he took you by the hand and he led you out uh, from among them, uh, led you out uh, of the confusion, led you out. Uh, of the stress uh, led you out of the circumstances led you out from the problems uh, and got you all alone to himself uh, and then he touched you uh, and then he touched you uh, and then he touched you uh, and made you whole made you brand new uh, made you whole uh, and made you brand new uh, and now you can see clearly now. Thank God. Give him a praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Whatever, whatever it's going to take, you ought to make up in your mind. I'm in this thing for the long haul. Whatever it takes, God, I'm willing. Whatever it takes, God, I'm yours. Whatever it takes, God, I ain't going nowhere. Whatever it takes, God, use me for your glory. Hallelujah. Good God from Zion. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, get that in your spirit right now. I know it's rough. I know it's tough. I know it's disappointing. But whatever it takes, I'm here till the end hallelujah give him praise give him glory hallelujah 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 the saints the saints of old used to say I'm going to run on and I'm going to see what the end going to be in other words I'm not going to quit this race <laughs> Ah, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to do whatever it takes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Whatever it takes, saints of God. God promised us that he would be with us, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Through all of life's ups and downs, God promised that he would be with us. And so make this declaration with me, my brothers and my sisters. God, whatever it takes, I'm here. Work on me. Use me for your glory and for your honor. Whatever, uh, whatever it takes, God. I'm your servant. I'm your vessel. And God, 
I want to be a vessel of honor. Use me, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. Whatever it takes, that is our declaration for today, my brothers and sisters. Whatever it takes. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that you've given us to spend together as we tabernacle around your holy word. God, we pray now for, your bro for our brothers and sisters. We pray for your children, oh God, that you would help us to know even while we're on this journey that you will see us through to the end. Give us determination. Give us resolve that we won't quit. We won't give up. We won't surrender. But we are willing to do whatever it takes so that you can get the glory out of our lives. We bless you now, God. And we want to bless you with our lives, with our service, with our gifts, with our talents, with our abilities, that we might bring glory to your name and that you might use us as vessels to expand your kingdom. We thank you right now, God, for thinking of us that you might use us for your glory and for your honor. And God, we declare once again, whatever it takes, we're willing to do it and to go through. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. Amen. Stay encouraged. Know that God's hand of favor is upon your life. May the blessings of God be upon you. Understand that goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. Be blessed and we'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>